welcome to the 34th episode of A Little Thespian Podcast. On today's episode, we talk to a all-around great human being. She is an actress, singer, dancer, and all-around great human being. Her name is Emily Pinson. So without further ado, let's hop into episode 34 of A Little Thespian Pod. Cast. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the 34th episode of the Little Thespian Podcast. On today's episode we have a gifted, talented actress, singer, dancer, and all-around lovely human being. Her name is Emily Pinson. Thank you so much Emily for being on. It's going to be a great time. Thank you so much for having me. I'm like really excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited too. It's been a bit of a hiatus um, recently because of everything. I mean yeah. we've been We've been good now, uh, somewhat, with COVID. Somewhat. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of been, you know, stuff's been popping up, which is a great thing. Which and, is absolutely great, yeah. Yeah, and hopefully we continue to, to go in that direction, guys. Um, and, I mean, that's why I always say on the podcast, please wear a mask, wash your hands, and socially distance. As much as we're near that, we're not quite there yet. Um, and our summer is just around the corner, but that doesn't mean let's go and party quite yet um until everyone's vaccinated guys um we're not out of the woods so uh please continue to do your part to get rid of this thing because my god guys it's been a while yeah too long. it's too been too long. too long too long um but instead of talking about covid because i mean we, we who wants to talk, talk about, about that, that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. um let's talk about theater something that we both love and that a lot of people love um so let's hop into something more light and bright um which is the little thespian podcast um sure. so the um the first question on here always is the same question all the time how exactly did you get into theater oh boy um so i guess um i guess it really started like I've always been doing like shows ish, like even in, I don't know, in elementary school, anything that resembled theater, it was like, I always wanted to be a part of it just cause I found it so interesting and I found it so different. And it was like, you know, as a kid, it's like, oh, you play dress up or you play like make believe and stuff. And now it's like, no, this is an actual thing that you can actually do. And people will come and watch you because it's cool dress up and it's cool make believe and stuff like that. And um, I think in high school is when I really like kind of it really cemented the idea of like, wow, I, this is really cool. Um, I saw a production of like Robin Hood, I think it was. And like, it wasn't even that good. <laughs> I was just like, that's so cool that they get to do that. And, and like, and like, we all believe this, like, it, it, like the whole con, it was just like the whole concept of theater of like, I'm going to stand on a stage, I'm going to do this. And you're going to believe whatever I say. I'm totally a different person and I dress differently and I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm a character from this and it's like, yeah, okay, cool. And, and that's just it, you know, and there's no like other like questioning that has to be involved. It's just that that's what it is. Um, so I just loved that idea that it was so cool that people like did that for a living and, and, um, and then I was a part of a production of, um, I got to be part of a production of Hair, the musical, which uh, was like wild. I got like five lines, but I was like, I'm gonna say those five lines so great. Like I'm gonna do the best that I can because I had a blast with that show. Um, and then it, and then I think like the, the kind of peak in high school was really um, uh, The Wizard of Oz and I played the Wicked Witch and that was just so, so fun of like me running backstage and getting painted green and then coming on and like playing this like fantastic character that was just like crazy it, like you can you can really like let yourself loose in like something like that because it's really not anything like in real life so just kind of you gotta milk it for uh, for what it's worth so that was really cool honestly I mean, like and, and like you know how people like say like oh you know if you're if you're not sure what you want to do do what you love and I was like okay like I don't really know what else to do and and I really love this thing so that's kind of how I 
kind of continued it um, and, and, afterward, yeah. and that's like a lot of us like that's why we do it right because we love it and like yeah. there's been so many people that I've had on here that they watch that one show or they go and they just try it and then magically they know yeah. just then and there that yeah. this is what they want to do and I mean that's yeah. that's basically your story right and then yeah I'm like yeah. it's just it's really um it's really interesting because I never f- I never looked at it in a way of like because because I, I know like a lot of people or or some people that have this kind of um idea of like well I'm gonna work my way to the top I'm gonna I'm gonna do it to get famous I'm I'm, I'm gonna do it to like kind of be seen in the spotlight which is totally fine and totally okay I just I never I never saw it that way because I was just like, I'm just doing something that I really enjoy doing. And it doesn't matter what comes out of it. I don't care if like only one person shows up to a show. I, like I'm just doing it because I just, I absolutely love doing it. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I feel like a lot of, a lot of us, we, we have that preconceived notion that, okay, well, fame and whatnot yeah. this is I've said it on here before it's a career of passion if you don't have passion for it why would you yeah what are you doing I mean, yeah especially theater yeah. yeah again it's not lucrative it's not lucrative at all <laughs> yeah yeah no so, and it's like I I always say um I had the pleasure of working uh with uh one of my like the English class that we have at at CGEP that is offered like for theater students but also everybody it's like the theater workshop class and I had the opportunity to like direct a couple of scenes and even plays like f- with students that were like from police tech, um, dentistry, social science, um, health sciences. And they're like, I've never done this in my life, but you know, let's just kind of like see what this is. And after doing it, it was like, I loved being able to introduce what I love doing to like other people. I thought that was just so, so cool. Cause like, I feel like everyone should do theater at least once in their life just to like kind of see what it is or kind of uh, experience what we experience. And like, that's like, that's why I love it. Right. That we can touch so many different people um, during the day. I mean, it's, it's great that that program um, or Mm -hmm. that, I guess that that class allows us to, you know, branch out with so many different people like yeah. I remember I had someone from sciences in my group yeah. uh, in one of them and they're like what you guys do this like so often and I'm like yeah it's so much fun I'm like it, it really is yeah. it's, like that's why they call it a play and I've said it on here before because you're just playing on stage you're transforming and yeah. you don't get that anywhere else right yeah so. yeah no um, I actually do want to talk a bit more about um, kind of shedding wisdom to other people. Um, so do you have any words of wisdom for someone who may want to jump into the arts, but seems scared um, in doing it? Yeah, um, I, it can, okay, <laughs> it can feel, it can seem really like intimidating at first, because I know like even for for me personally, like joining, um, joining a program that it was like, oh, I, there's the expectation of like, I have to be good. I have to be like, I have to be good at what I do to be here. I have to compete with other people because other people are competing for the same thing that I want and whatnot. And I think, uh, I think the best piece of advice that I had received was like, think of theater as just another subject in the sense of, it's it's the study of human humans it's it's an anthropology of sorts and if you really wanted to take it more technical and say well this is what i'm studying you know uh it's it's totally that we're studying human nature how people behave and act around another um what their personality is like and how that changes based on their interactions with other people based on themselves and how they experience uh, certain things and whatnot. Um, And also the other thing would be um, theater is always a collaborative effort. It's never, it's never 
throw you in deep water. Here you go. That's, you know, go alone and, and stuff like that. I've never, I've never felt alone when, when I'm in this program or when I'm kind of doing theater, even if I have, you know, even if I am in my one role and like, that's mine. And, and, you know, I have, there's a certain expectation put on, on people to like meet those expectations of that character and whatnot. But like, it's still a collaborative effort in the sense of like, you're, you're working all the time with other people. You're not, you're not completely alone ever. Even in the audition process, I've never, I've had the pleasure of like working outside of the program and like working in Montreal and like on the scene, like especially for Fringe and stuff like that. And I found that um, most, not all, but most people are so like, so supportive and you go to an audition and you don't really know anybody there, but a lot of the time people make you feel welcome because it's, it shouldn't be this, you're here alone and you're, it's a cutthroat industry and you're, you know, you have to like um, fight for the role that you want. And um, I think it's, I think it's a, it's a, it's a great um, collaborative effort. And I think people forget about that a lot. So. Very wise. Um, and it, it's true. I mean, even a one man show isn't really a one man show because exactly. you have everyone backstage, you have costume, you have set, you have, Oh yeah. I can go, yeah. there's a full list. Oh yeah. Um, no. And that's the thing. And like, even if you're, that, that's, I mean, I guess another thing is like, even if you're one actor, like there's so many other people that, that end up collaborating with you anyway, because you're you know you're on that stage but you're not the only person that like put you on that stage as well exactly and I mean that's the thing like I'm hoping that if people are watching this and are about to do a show um maybe, maybe direct it or whatnot yeah without the actors without everyone behind the scenes um I mean it is really truly a collaborative effort and without one piece nothing works Exactly. Right? So, yeah. I mean, yeah, um, the community here is lovely from what I've seen, yes, um, yeah. but I'm sure we do have some people that still have that, that notion. I, I'm yeah. using notion a lot today, yeah. but you know, <laughs> that, okay. that thought um, yeah. that it's not um, a collaborative effort. And it's yeah, only about I me. think, I think people also need to realize, um, I guess, in a sense of if there is that sort of um because it does happen we're not saying that it that it doesn't it definitely does happen where people are a little bit more self-centered or people are a little bit more um kind of uh like secluded in what they do and 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 that's that's fine that's you know you do you that's okay um but um when you do get in a when you do get in a role or when you do get in a show, I think like another piece of advice that I would get is, or that I would give is, um, is you, the director obviously chose you for that role. Um, you auditioned, you went through the whole process, just like everybody else. Um, the director chose you for that role. So if there's any doubt in terms of maybe this person deserved it because maybe they're complaining about it or like maybe this person or maybe I'm not necessarily fit for this role because I don't know, I'm not necessarily, well, I mean, kind of insecure about my abilities or maybe this person is complaining that they should have gotten this role. That's not up for you. <laughs> That's not your thought. That should not be your thought process because you're already here. The director chose you to be there and you just have to trust in the process of I'm here. I deserve to be here. It is what it is. And you may not think that it's the role for you, um, mm -hmm. but usually the director sees something you don't see. So exactly. just kind of, just kind of grin and bear it and see maybe this is the perfect role that you need right now. Right? Yeah, we're, we're all our own personal critics and mm -hmm it's really hard to sometimes see past that and uh it's it's always good you know every like you hear like oh it's always good to get a second opinion like even for that it's there's that second opinion you know so yeah. and there's there's no harm in even asking your director why did you pick me for this role right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i know it might be jarring and you may not want to know <laughs> um sometimes i mean I if you really do want to know you can ask yeah, yeah. for sure I mean, he's, he's there to help with the show, right? So, yeah. 
Um, so I actually want to go through roles and it's a perfect segue because um, okay. you did quite a few at Abbott and you're still at Abbott, which is lovely. Um, and I cannot wait to see what happens in the last year. Um, yeah. But we'll get to that. Um, okay. <laughs> so um, before we hop in to Pippin, because we are going to talk a lot about Pippin, because my God. Um, <laughs> But uh, I actually want to talk about both Anonymous and Almost Main. Sure. Um, so you got to basically do some stuff with Jason and Andy um, as well. Um, so I actually want to talk about Anonymous first because that's okay. a piece not many people know of. I didn't know before seeing it, um, yeah. but outstanding. Um, and I'm, I'm not surprised. I mean, Andy kind of... He does weird things, but then magically. Magically, it turns into magic. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, so how was your experience on Anonymous? So Anonymous was a really, really interesting show because it was it was my first show with Andy um, because the other two were with Jason. And I think um, it's always a little jarring when you have a director for a while and you're used to that style and then you change directors. Not necessarily it's a bad thing. It was just very much like, okay, this is different from what I'm used to, but that's okay because you are gonna be working with a lot of different directors and different working styles and and whatnot. Um, And I found it really interesting that um, it was, there was a lot more of a, a a stiffness to it and I don't want to I don't mean that in a bad way there was a very it was very much like um ethic um the show itself there was much more of a stiffness than it was to the other shows and I truly believe that that's because other two shows were made like the first one was a musical so it was like okay it kind of needs to be kind of loose in regards to like all right, what can we play with? What can we kind of like um, go, go um, for, like, like how do we, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like, I, I, I don't know. It was just, it was just very much more like, like not what I was expecting, but still really cool to be a part of. Um, I think Anonymous uh, was a beautiful story. I enjoyed it very much. I cried at the table read. (laughs) Um, uh, And uh, I know that a lot of people didn't necessarily appreciate it as much as the other shows, but that's also, I think, because we were expecting more of that like musical fun kind of aspect. And it was kind of a more serious story this time. And um, I, again, I I quite enjoyed it. I thought the people working on it were great. and it was also very different just because I was working with brand new people as well versus the other times I had been working with people that I had been with for a while. So I was kind of used to that. It was a different experience overall, but I'm really glad that I went through it because it was a big learning experience for me as well. Yeah, I think like also just during that show, there was a lot of like personal limitations that that I found uh, were were kind of like, I was hitting my limit a little bit in that show. And I really learned from that show in terms of like, okay, this is where I sit personally in this limitation or, or here. And I know that I shouldn't necessarily push myself because, uh, you know, that's not necessarily going to be me at my best and I want me at my best. So it, it just, it was a very big learning curve but it was a, is a necessary one. (laughs) Honestly, like you were saying, Anonymous, I found that it was probably one of the most serious shows I've seen Andy do. Not that Andy doesn't do serious. No, but I mean, Andy, Andy does, Andy does weird, bizarre stuff, which I love. It's just not necessarily like super serious all of the time and I found it interesting that because Anonymous is the like it incorporated the story of the Odyssey and but the Odyssey itself is like 
just tragedy after tragedy after tragedy, right? And Anonymous just ended up being like that, but also with the embedded storyline of, you know, the mother trying to find her son and the son has no memory and he's trying to find his mother. And like, this whole thing was like, okay, it's like, you know, I, I vividly remember one of the shows where like, I, I think it was just like me just going through some stuff at the same time during that show, but also like the cast and like, um, just the show itself. And I remember just like before one of my scenes, just like kind of like crying in the, in the, the wings and then being like, Oh wait, that's my cue. And then like wiping away my tears and going on stage and then having to cry on stage because I was like sad and whatnot. So it was, it was a really like emotional time, but it taught me a lot about, uh, as I said, like my own kind of limitations and, and, um, where I stand on certain things. So. I, I've definitely been in that in that type of uh, mindset too before. I mean, fifteen dogs um, we did, and my God, um, just like you're at, at my point. I was in second year, right? So yeah, you're already trying to kind of prove yourself. Not that you, yeah, you not know. that you need to, but it is kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then you're doing a production that is just sad throughout, yeah. like just completely yeah. sad. And you're just, yeah. you know, you, you do have that mindset of like, yeah. wow. I think, I think what really, what really, really makes a show, no matter if it's, and, and es- sorry, especially if it's sad like that, if it's like a really emotional, really like gut-wrenching uh, show, I think what really, really can get you through it uh, is just the mindset that you put yourself in. Because if you're always putting yourself in this mindset of like, okay, it's sad, it's gloomy, it's dark, it's emotional, versus I'm just telling a story. It's a very different mindset and it sounds super simple, but it's a lot harder to really kind of put yourself there as uh, you know, than you think. And I think um, when you ha- when you're surrounded by people that also have the mindset of it's gloomy, it's sad, it's dark, whatever. That also doesn't help because you're constantly surrounded by that as well. So it's really like the mindset that you put yourself in. I'm just telling a story. It's just a, it's just a show and the people that surround that, that are surrounding you and, and um, kind of uh, drawing your, your energy from them uh, I think helps a ton. Absolutely. And I mean, you guys should really take notes on that because it's true. Because if you're always gloomy and down and you've been doing this for like several weeks now, probably several yeah. months, um, you've been in that story. Remember that you are a storyteller, right? Um, that's what actors are. We're storytellers. I mean, it's um, super, super important to keep that in mind. Cause like I've, I've been in that spot where I've been like, how am I going to do this for like two, three, four, five more weeks. You know what I mean? And it's really just like, all right, so I just did a scene. But you know what? It's really cool because, you, you know, you have to change the kind of mindset that, you, that, that, that you're in. So like, oh, um, I just did this really like gloomy monologue and I'm just really sad. But you know what? I thought I did this line really well. And I thought that I did this really well. And, you know, and you kind of are like, you treat it as it's just, it's just a show. And that type of detachment is almost necessary when it comes to long-term shows like that because as much as it is you know theater use your emotion call upon your emotions to kind of like imbue that and uh it's always going to make the scene feel more real but that's where we also lose actors in the sense of like they lose themselves in the role and and um they are sad they are gloomy and they they take on the characteristics of their character and yeah, it's method and it looks really real, but what is, what is the point if you lose yourself in the process? You know what I mean? Exactly. And, you know, it's, it's sad that we need to, you know, talk about this, but it's, it's very, it's very true, especially now with everything with mental health and it is mental health awareness month. Um, So guys, please just make sure you're okay. Um, And especially with, any most of the roles that we play they're always flawed in some aspect which is why we're watching it right yeah so yeah. don't don't tr- try and not to get lost in your character okay yeah. um yeah. it's very important yeah. 
Um, so let's go from dark and gloomy um, <laughs> to light and bright, uh, sort of, okay. um, with Almost Maine, because it is very okay. funny, but to some extent, too, because it's also a sad story about um, the ups and downs of uh, relationships. So yeah. how was Almost Maine for you and working with Michael Briganti, um, who did have a question in regards to how... Uh, do you have any, um, you know, um, lasting, uh, you know, feelings about him as a scene partner? Uh, <laughs> do you like him as a scene partner? <laughs> he, wa- he wants me to talk about him. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, how was Almost Um Almost Maine was a blast. It honestly, like, it was awesome. It was amazing. I loved it. And although my scene, I think my scene was maybe the gloomiest out of all of them, just because it dealt with some pretty real, pretty real stuff. But just as I was saying, like, it makes a world of a difference. It doesn't matter if your scene is, is like, it doesn't matter if what you're doing um, is like dark, gloomy, is, is, you know, is sad, because it, it really makes a difference when you have, um, the right mentality um, and the right scene partner. Um, and uh, for me, Michael Briganti was a joy to work with. I've never like connected on a on a on an actor level. Like I've never connected so quickly with another person before. And I thought it was so crazy that we came from like completely like two very different like backgrounds. Even though we were in kind of the same program. Um, he had been graduated for like years now and was like, oh, I'm working professionally in the field. And that like scared, scared me. Cause I was like, ah, I'm just working with a professional, ah, like whatever. And, and, uh, but then we started working together and it was so like chill. And he really was like, all right, so let's actually discuss like backstory and certain things about our characters. And he was super like into it. And he really like showed me that it's really good and cool as an actor to really do that research and to really like focus in like when you're playing a character, do the backstory research, do your do your own little research, make up your own uh, stories for the character because it's gonna matter in the end and it's really gonna show through in your performance. And I think really what made the performance for me at least was to have all this backstory, was to have all this stuff that I could think about during the scene because it just, it made me not have to reach for certain emotions because if the story was already there, then the emotions were already there as well. So it was a really interesting experience because I was also just very emotional like in that scene anyway. But then it was hilarious because I would like go in the crossover and like 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 a underneath the stage and I'd go and then I'd meet him like halfway through because that's the ending of our scene and we'd be like high-fiving each other we'd be like oh yeah that was so good oh my god look at you you were so sad what the heck like <laughs> you know so uh it was really cool to like poke fun at each other like that and and um I was also Michael Briganti wants me to talk about him I'm gonna talk about him um he had I and I I don't know I haven't um he hasn't uh, talked to me about any onstage mishaps since then, um, but that was probably his, he said he probably his biggest <laughs> onstage mishap is when he um, started to do our scene and it was like two minutes into our scene and our scene was very like short anyway. And he started saying the lines that were like about to end the scene. And I like had to like try and get his attention. And, and I know that he, and I knew that he was panicking on stage and he didn't know what to do. And I was like, trying to get his attention. And I think I snapped in his face, like on stage. I was like, hello, like, look at me, look at me. I know what we're doing. I know what you're doing. Like, and um, we ended up fixing it, but it was just like that meeting in the crossover afterward, he was on the floor, like, oh my God, oh my God, what just happened? Like, and it was hilarious. And one of my friends was at the show and they said, oh, they didn't even suspect anything, which is great. But um, that's something that I'll that I'll keep with me for a long time. It was pretty great, so. And like yeah. those mishaps are the best thing that happens. Oh um, yeah. yeah. And like, those are the things that you talk about years later, right? Oh, absolutely, um, absolutely. It's probably like yeah. still the thing that stands out the most from our scene is like that onstage mishap, it was so good. Yeah. It, yeah, it, it always happens too. There's always one 
uh, show that either it's like everyone does it or yeah. there's just that one time that like you'll never forget. Like yeah. I remember yeah. we were talking about 15 dogs. Literally Chris needed to roll up a giant rug and run off with it. Okay. Um, okay. Because we he left it on we left it on the stage. Oh yes, I I I do remember that. Yeah. Um and he that. hit all the curtains, all the it, it was, yeah, it wasn't great. <laughs> um but uh yeah. It seems like those moments like cuz I feel like those moments are the things that are really like that make it really real about the scene and about what you're doing. So I think that's why you remember them so much. Cause it's like, that was really, that was hilarious within the scene that nobody noticed, but we definitely, there was definitely something wrong there, you know? So and it's something that you do like a hundred times, right? Like oh, yeah. you, you do everything the same. And then when something changes, Oh yeah. It's, you remember. Yeah. <laughs> you remember. Yeah. Um, yeah. so there is one more show that I do want to talk about, uh, before sure. we do talk about Fumito, because we are going to talk about Bathory as well. Yeah, sure. Um, but I do want to talk about Pippin. Um, okay. so Pippin, uh, was an incredible show that people still talk about now. Um, yeah. so how was Pippin and playing Catherine for you? Um, um in- like, yeah. like it was, um, I don't think it was, it was nothing like I'd ever experienced before. At that point, I was, I was basically still in my first year of ALC, like just going into second year of ALC. Well, I mean, in the school year, it was literally like my second semester in ALC, which is wild to me because it was like high school and then ALC first semester and then second semester, I'm doing this amazing, amazing show with amazing people. And it was really just like, wow, this happened so fast. And I didn't think that I'd be here right now doing this um and it was just such a surreal experience and i remember um uh it it, that was when it was really like uh, like for me personally i was when i got the role i hadn't expected it at all like at all (laughs) i didn't audition for that role i didn't i wasn't expecting it um and i know that for I, for a long time afterward, it took me a while to finally feel comfortable in that role because I felt like I didn't necessarily deserve it. Um, And I think that really like messed with me for a while. And there wasn't necessarily a specific moment that I kind of got out of that, but it was just over time and through the, 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 the long rehearsal process and, and uh, kind of getting into being excited about certain elements about the show, because this, this, this show was so fantastical and, and wild in the sense of costumes, makeup, uh, set, music, like it was everything, everything at once, (laughs) like all at once, you know what I mean? And um, it was hard to get excited about that when in the rehearsal process, everyone's just showing up in their, you know, like their pajamas or, or, and then we're, okay, oh God, we got to like do the dance now. And like, okay, let's do the dance. And we got to do one of the dances like five times. Cause we got to, you know, so I think it really, um, everybody started to get really, really excited about the show. And I think that's how it always is really, especially with musicals like that of like, you only really, really start to get excited about it. Like later on when it's like, oh, we're introducing certain costume elements or certain, and like even in the show there were magic tricks so like certain like magic tricks and this and that and talking about just even the little details like what are we going to do for the pre-show and like what are you going to do for this scene and like uh what are you going to be saying to me pretending to talk to me on the stage and like like just the little tiny details like that it was so exciting to put everything together and um we were so unsure the first opening night we were like what if everybody hates it? <laughs> like, like we had that or like, cause we knew that it was a great show, but we were also like, there was the underlying like, but what if like, what if everybody hates it? What if everybody doesn't like it or something like that? And the reaction that we got from that show was unlike anything that I had ever heard before. And, and I, I really felt kind of recognized as, as an actor and, and, and kind of I really kind of um, solidified my place in terms of being like, I know what I'm doing. I might be insecure about it, but I know that I'm here because, you know, the director put me here for a reason. So I must be here um, for a good reason. And, uh, and I think it really, 
definitely helped my uh, my confidence kind of build after that show, especially after opening night. I think opening night was was crazy. I still remember um, the the curtain coming down after that, and then us just like freaking out behind the curtain because we were like, "What the frick was that? Like, what what that like the audience reaction, the show because the energy had never been so high, and it was just." crazy like I just like I still remember like this is the sheer energy coming off of like the audience and the cast and like feeding off of each other and it was just insane yeah honestly um Pippin still rings very high up um if not the top um, of what I've seen at Abbott because Jason um I think Jason did an amazing job you did an incredible job you should be very proud Thank you. Um, it, honestly, like from start to finish, thoroughly entertained. I'm not surprised. The music in itself, incredible. I still yeah. listen to it. Like I still actually listen to that music. No, me too. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, I mean, I like the, it's wild to me that I was already like very into Broadway and show tunes at that point, And it was really like what like I've never heard of this show before and 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 it was and like the soundtrack was so good and we were like a lot of us were like we've never heard of this before but this is kind of good like this is kind of catchy you know and and um no I still listen to the soundtrack sometimes myself and uh I think I had uh, one of the songs as my alarm in the morning at some point so yeah I had morning glow at one point because I'm like this is it was dark, but it was like nice and bright at the beginning. And oh like this, yeah, no. You know, why it's not? Yeah. Sometimes I still can't like if I if it's in the rotation on my shuffle, like when I'm listening, I'll be like, oh, I'll just listen to this, and I will fully remember like one of the dances that we did, or like, or like, cause I was always um if I was singing in the chorus, I was singing the harmony of the higher part. So I was like, I'd catch myself like singing the higher part in my head, and I'd be like, no, that's not actually what it is, like. <laughs> So I feel like that happens a lot with musicals though, because yeah. like I was set to do Mary Poppins. Oh, I yeah, wish yeah. that could have happened. I really wish I know. I know. We were so we were all like literally, even if like we weren't part of the cast, like my ensemble and, and whatnot, we were so disappointed to hear that it was being canceled. Like we we're so excited to go. Um and that's the thing too like it's very similar to Pippin and we, when we think about that because like music dancing yeah. magic yeah um yeah. but uh yeah I also wanted to talk uh, about like the difference between doing a play and doing a musical because sure a lot of people kind of think they're they're very similar but they're actually very different in the beginning parts of it um yeah. And I mean, especially with something like Pippin, I can only imagine the amount of uh, dance rehearsals that you guys had to do. Yeah. The, the yeah. amount of times you were probably next to a piano going over everything <laughs> yeah. um, with Jason. Um, but it's very different compared to a play where it's just lines. Yeah. Well, I think it's, it's, uh, it was very different in the, um, the type and amount of energy that you're expending in terms of uh, like actually like when you're in rehearsal because I remember after Pippin rehearsals like not necessarily all of them because they weren't all like that but especially after dance rehearsals especially after like dance hours of like singing and learning harmonies and whatnot it's like it's a different type of tired afterward where you're like I'm absolutely exhausted mentally and physically like where I think like you know something like anonymous because it was like just the energy surrounding everybody was was very much in that kind of dark gloomy kind of place um I would I would go home from anonymous rehearsals and be absolutely completely exhausted and just want to sleep but mainly because it was a mental exhaust exhaustion that was there versus Pippin was very much like physical mental emotional all of the above like we were just so exhausted because it was just like the the amount of energy needed for that show was was crazy and i and you really felt it too cuz um uh not necessarily cuz in the rehearsal process it's like okay you can be like ah, whatever in the actual shows you need to bring that energy every single night every single show and it has to be almost like the first time that you're doing the show 
because it is technically for the audience that you're performing it for. You have to just assume that this is the first time that this audience has ever seen this show. So why not give it your all for that audience, you know? And um, having that like really like, like expending that much energy like every night was getting to a lot of us. And I remember our lead was like, get, like lost his voice, was really sick. Like I think the second to last show or something like that. And he completely lost his voice. And um, it's just cause we were going so hard at it. Like, and, um, and I think we all like loved that show when we all wanted to, we all wanted to give our all, but um, that was really, um, it's each each show has been very interesting because it's given it given its own kind of learning uh, curve coming with it because as much as you know you want to give your all and whatnot you do need to understand what your limitations are because you don't ever want to push yourself too much that you can't or um, or are like uh, prohibited from like doing what you want to do for the next show you know what I mean for sure and I mean guys if you are a part of a musical your voice is something you really need to take care of uh definitely make sure that you guys have tea um often very often yeah uh, make sure that you guys are just taking care of everything um yeah. in it because really like with dance too as well yeah dancing it's really worth it to um you stretch before you work out you know it's the same thing with your voice uh, you can't just start singing just like that. Like it's really important for you to be taking care of your, of your voice, your vocal cords, just all of that. If it's, um, it sounds silly, but like unnecessary talking during the day, like you don't necessarily need to do that because you need to save your voice and it kind of sucks, but like you really want to, you really want to take care of it because the last thing that we want to do is <laughs> lose your voice halfway through the show. So vocal rest is necessary when you're yeah. in musicals because if yeah. if not like if you don't have that you don't have a show guys it's that yeah. simple yeah um i would love to keep talking about pipping <laughs> and i could honestly do an entire um an entire podcast on it i can yeah uh, I, I honestly can um but i do want to talk about the future and what it holds for you but sure. before that, I want to talk about Femido's production of Bathory. Um, so yeah. you were in a Fringe show. So how was, was that for you? Because um, it is a completely different beast. It was very, it was a very interesting experience. Probably one of those, the most um, positive experiences uh, in theater, which is really like surprising because it's really, it was really not a show that was as extravagant as pretty much any of the other Abbott shows that I had done. It was just so rewarding because uh, this was completely outside of my program. This was completely in Montreal, outside of my school. So it was like the people that are coming to see the show want to see the show, not because it's a school production, but because it's an actual production of like real, real theater. You know what I mean? And um I think uh, in school, it's it's that I encourage people to kind of like, if you're in school, to try and also kind of like do work outside of school because that can sometimes be your little bubble that you kind of stay in. And, and when you go out into the real world, it can be kind of intimidating as well. Um, but I'm really incredibly glad that I got to work with like people that I know and people that I that I loved, uh, like loved working with and, and know just because of schooling. And, and we kind of like went on this um, journey together. And it was, um, it was really, really cool to be a part of. It was, it was one of the things where I was like, we're going to do this and we're going to do this right because it's, um, it's not school. It's, <laughs> it's, it's theater in Montreal, which is so super, super cool to say. So um, I chopped all my hair off for it. So <laughs> Cause I was like, yeah, well, let's do it. Cause if we're going to do it, let's do it right. You know? So, yeah. That's great. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's true. I mean, once you get out of Abbott, you kind of have that, not that Abbott's, Abbott's amazing. No, but yeah. It's... Once you get out into the professional world, the, the real world, yeah. um, there's just something more rewarding about getting that role or getting a part in anything when it comes to, 
uh, any Montreal company out here because I agree. Yeah. It's it's great and fringe. I, yeah, it, it's very underrated. Uh, oh, a lot yeah. of people love yeah. it, but they don't know why they love it. Well, it's because it's people that just want to do this. Yeah, get up yeah. and get the funds to do it. I, I just I thought I thought it was so incredible to be a part of it because even just like um they have this like little show that they put on like fringe for all I think it was a uh, like it's like right at the beginning when they try to introduce people like okay for the next month these are the upcoming shows and we did this like little skit and whatnot like to introduce what our show was along with like the hundreds of other shows that were there and it was insane to be like these people are just doing this just because they want to and it's not they're not gaining anything from it other than they want to do it that's so cool like to to kind of like be in a room with all of these like fellow creators and be like yeah we're just here because we want to be here not for not for any other thing than personal gain you know what I mean so and it's a huge step going from um Abbott's Casgrain stage oh yeah to Oh my God, a sea of people. Because at Fringe yeah. for All, it's at Club Soda. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's a huge space. That venue is huge. <laughs> like, I was very, like, when we first walked in and we were like, okay, we're here to do our little thing, like, for our show. And we walked on, we were like, well, at least me, I was like, are we in the right place? Like, this is so big. Like, so, um, and our stage ended up being, uh, we were at the main line, which is actually c- quite small compared to, um, the Casgrain stage, which there wasn't anything like wrong with that. It was just very like, all right, we have to adapt like what we've been doing like to this stage and like just the whole process of like adapting to our surroundings, to the show, because you wouldn't necessarily get the same audience uh, like on a Friday that you would on a Tuesday. Like we've definitely had shows during Bathory that were like, it was absolutely full packed, jam packed. People were sitting on the floor like jam packed Um, or we had six people in the audience and we knew because we counted like, you know, so, but you know what, it's, it really, as I said before, it, I've never necessarily done this for, you know, for oh, the, the audience, the, the stage, the, this or whatever, like those six people, they got the best show that they, that we've ever seen. Because honestly, I think we said afterward, we were like, Oh, that was like probably one of our best runs. And that was like in front of six people. So it really, yeah. Like I said, guys, you got to love it. And you can just hear the passion. Um, And I mean, it's a great segue to talk about what's coming up uh, for you and the future that holds uh, for, uh, you know, just now you're about to be in your last year, which is crazy, right? I know it, it flies by. But how how do you feel now moving forward into your last year at um, Abbott? So I'd like to say that I feel prepared. Um, I don't, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, it's part of the, the learning experience, I guess. Um, unfortunately, I think with the pandemic and everything, um, at least for me personally, I felt almost like, almost like cheated out of my second year. Cause this, this whole thing started in, um, our, oh God, our first, at the end of our first semester. No, the end of our second semester. So like, or my bad beginning of second semester. So we were like, we did a whole semester, um, online in first year. So we really only had like one, one semester to kind of bond with each other um, in the way that you do in first year and, and whatnot. And it was just really like, it was kind of upsetting to be like, I, I, I didn't necessarily get the same experience that everybody else was talking about because I have a lot of, because I was an ALC for like two years beforehand, I had a lot of friends that were in prof that were like, I can't wait for you to do this. And I can't wait for you to do that and this and that, and you're going to love this. You're going to do that. And I never really got to do any of those things, but at the same time, it's okay because we did things that normally nobody else would do. We learned a lot about like theater online and, and about like trying to move this medium, like onto this plot, like onto this, the, 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 the virtual platform and um 
we found a lot of different uh like ways on to do it like in clever ways that you wouldn't necessarily think about and uh you know for example like pandemic round the the show that's going on right now andy's show i haven't seen it yet but like literally just pictures and stuff like that i'm like i was so like it brought me so much joy to like be like we can still do this in a way and we still found a way to like make this happen make this work and i'm so so glad about that because there was a while where it was it was looking pretty bleak for um for a lot of us and uh i think that along with uh i just did uh we just recorded a radio play with terry it was his it's his last show so uh it's really cool that i got to be a part of that and it was an experience that you would never really think that you would experience in theater because i can tell you from experience a radio play is incredibly different from an actual theater play because it 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 involves elements that you don't really think that you would need you didn't think that you would need until you're in that moment and you're like oh damn it's this is different this is different but this is cool so i'm really glad that um there have been a, a lot of like moments where i've been like there we are we're still here it's really cool so yeah and I know that stuff is going towards the right direction. Pandemic yeah. Round, it does, it is amazing. I suggest okay. anyone watch it because it it's it's great. Yeah. Um, but I know that you're gonna have your full fledged um, theater experience in third year, which yeah. is great. Um, yeah. I know you guys only really bonded like face to face in first year. Yeah, but that's the minute you guys get the third year I mean that it, it connects even more you know yeah and I mean like although I say like oh we only got to bond in first year there of course like my my ensemble uh, like we're we're pretty like we're pretty tight we're pretty close together and it's really it's really interesting how that bond I think is is very different in certain aspects but there is like we kind of bonded over just different different things because we had to you know and um I think third year is going to be a weird culmination of like what we've already experienced versus, okay, trying to get back into the normal. And it might be weird at first, but um, I'm beyond excited to be back um, on a Kaz Green stage again. <laughs> I'm, I'm like really excited. And you know what, even if it, maybe if it looks like what pandemic round is still on stage, not necessarily with an audience, still socially distanced, that's okay. <laughs> that's fine because it's still really cool uh, what they ended up doing and I'm just really excited to be a part of something like that so I cannot wait to hopefully buy a ticket yes um, and actually sit in the audience and watch a production I mean it's been yeah. so long right? it's been so long yeah and like for 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 me at least like I the last production that I did uh on like in at John Abbott was technically anonymous because like second year of ALC and then first year of prof was nothing right and then second year we were supposed to get shows and then we didn't necessarily get shows we got the radio play but it's not on a stage so it was like yeah so third year um it's gonna be the <laughs> didn't expect to be waiting so long but there we go like it's uh hopefully it's gonna happen yeah. hopefully it's gonna happen um yeah. and it's a great uh great way to hop into our last question sure um Unfortunately, I mean, I, I can do this all day, um, <laughs> yeah. but I also the, talk a lot, so it's okay. Yeah. Um, the last question is actually uh, past third year. Uh, what what would you like uh, your uh, theater experience, your film experience, your acting experience uh, to be once you exit John Abbott? Um, I think that's a really good question. You're definitely not the first person to have <laughs> asked that question before. Um, uh, I would love to say that I have a five-year plan, 10-year plan, all planned out. Everything looks pretty and beautiful and nice. And um, it does not look like that. Uh, I personally gave myself time in ALC and said, okay, this is really something that I'm interested in. This is something that I wanna do. Um, We'll go into prof and see how we feel about it because I'm not too sure, but do what you love. So I'm still doing what I love. And um, 
uh, you have three years, I guess, three more years to, uh, to kind of decide that. And uh, here I am going into my third year, probably in the same boat as I was <laughs> going into first year being like, I don't really know. I have no idea. I love doing theater. And I think it's something that I'll always be doing. I don't know if it's necessarily something that I'll be continuing as uh, my primary kind of like source of income or as a job. But if, as I said before, it's really not <laughs> money and fame is really not what I'm going here for. So, um, uh, so if it's just a hobby and it just ends up being a hobby and I'm part of a, a collective of little things here and there, whether it's in Montreal, whether it's somewhere else, um, I'm okay with that. Such a great way to end it, guys. I mean, when it comes to passion, I don't think we could get a better guest. Um, because, I mean, it's it's true. I mean, you are very passionate about the arts and it's so good to see that a lot of people, uh, I, I'm sure, are in the same boat that just love love this this thing that, you know, sometimes people go in it for reasons that I don't understand. I mean, fame and... <laughs> over the top but yeah. it's, it's true uh people do do it um but it is great to see someone so passionate um talking on the podcast thank you um so before we go um i always try to guest on uh, uh i'm not trying to guess trying to light <laughs> on my guests see you guys yeah. With, with the hiatus, I've lost myself. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I try to light on my guests um, before we go. And again, guys, it's going to be another hard one because as you can see, Emily just so passionate in what she does. Um, she's amazing. She's an amazing singer, dancer, and actress. And I cannot wait to see what happens in third year and beyond. I know it's super bright. I just, I, I cannot wait. Um, it's going to be a crazy time here in Montreal and wherever I'm it so, takes you. So excited for the theater that's going to be just exploding out of people's minds, like the, in the within the next year. It's gonna, I can feel it. It's gonna be crazy. It's right. Gonna be good. And now with yeah. COVID, everyone's had the time to write. You know, oh yeah. Had the time to put that show together that we haven't seen yet. Yeah. yeah. So a, a lot of us actors are gonna get very, very busy very soon. Yeah. Um. So I cannot wait to see you guys jump out of Abbott and have like five jobs lined up back to back. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be great. Um, but thank you so much for being on. And I cannot believe we're already at 34. Um, it is absolutely incredible uh, that we've even went this long. And yeah. now we're going to be doing a 35th episode very soon that is different. Um, and I would love to uh, spoil the beans, um, but I'm not going to oh. uh, until the end. Uh, you guys need to wait. <laughs> Um, but let's just say it's more than three guests. It's maybe a whole cast um, oh, wow. joining us. Cool. <laughs> um, okay, cool. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fun. Um, and uh, yeah, so thank you so much, Emily, for being on. And no I, I really hope uh, to see you on stage very, very soon. I hope to see you in the audience very, very soon. <laughs> I'm hoping so. I'm, I'm really, I'm waiting for it. Me it's too, yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, we'll see you soon. The lights are off. The curtain has fallen. And it's time to say goodbye. Thank you all for joining us on the Little Thespian Podcast. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to ask. Either down below or on any of our platforms. On the next episode of Little Thespian Podcast, we have a supercalifragilisticexpialidocious episode coming your way when we have the cast of John Abbott College's Mary Poppins joining us in episode 35 of the Little Thespian Podcast. We have Riley, Deirdre, Vanessa, Miranda, Noah, Jake, Sean, and Carolyn joining us on the 35th episode of the Little Thespian Podcast to talk all memories and great things that were to come for this amazing production before sadly it got cancelled due to covid going to be a great time in episode 35 of Little Thespian Podcast. Thank you all for watching this episode of Little Thespian Podcast. If you guys want to show some more support, don't forget to 
ring the bell so you know on future videos. Like, comment, and subscribe to us here on YouTube, guys. It helps us out tremendously. Thank you all for watching, and thank you so much, Emily, for being on this episode of the Little Thespian Podcast. It was great talking to you, as it always is, and seeing the amazing passion you have for the arts. Talking about the arts, we have our third episode of the Shakespeare sit-downs, Macbeth coming your way very soon guys so keep an eye out for that and we might have a bit more news coming your way very shortly so stay tuned for what's to come thank you all for watching listening and guys don't forget to shine bright even through the darkest of days and know we're still in this crazy covid situation but soon we won't be so this has been your host matthew crandall telling you guys to always shine bright and we'll see you all on the next little thespian podcast